Hi, my name is Christian Hyde. I'm the Managing Director of Risk 360 and I have oversee our ISO 27001 practice. This is our ISO 27001 Explain series where we run through all 114 controls in the ISO 27001 framework and try to provide an explanation so as you're implementing your program you have some guidance. Today we're covering Control Objective 11 around physical and environmental security, specifically Control Objective 11.1 .1 for secure areas. So physical security is most relevant for organizations that have an office uh, where there are key activities being performed like engineering, if you have uh, key documents or uh, on-prem IT infrastructure. But it's also uh, relevant to organizations that have a hybrid environment. So if you have maybe a few offices and employees remotely, you just want to handle physical security slightly differently. The other thing I'll mention about physical security is it might not be um, a core responsibility of the information security or the cybersecurity team. You might need to bring in other team members like human resources or if you have them, the facilities management group to help understand and facilitate these controls. So in 11.1, .1, there are actually six controls as related to uh, secure areas. And we'll review each of these one by one. The first is uh, control 11.1.1 .1 around physical security perimeter. And if you think about an office, it's literally the zones of that office. So again, this might be where you want to bring in your uh, facilities manager and think about how they have zoned those for, uh, the facility in general. So you probably have public areas like the lobby. You'll have private areas uh, that might be like a sales room. And then you might have um, confidential areas where data is stored or key documents or if it's a call center that takes uh, healthcare information, something like that. But the zoning is important and you'll probably have a badge ID system that will enforce access control based on those zones. Again, that's something that's going to be highly specific to your organization and that you'll have to you know, work with your facilities manager to better understand. Control 11.1.2 .1 is around physical entry controls. So most modern organizations have uh, like key card readers at the entrances and exits. Uh, well, but you don't have to have key card readers. You could have a physical key or some other type of locking mechanism. It's just going to be highly dependent based on your organization, the size, the maturity, the structure. But in general, if you have a badge ID reader and then you have a way to provision badges based on zones and deprovision those badges when employees leave, that's what they're looking for around physical entry controls. Then you have securing offices, rooms, and facilities. Um, this is going to play off that overall zoning strategy that you have from a physical security perspective, how you're granting access, where you're granting access to, and what your logical uh, and physical access methodologies are on in terms of zoning. 11.1.4 uh, is around protection against external and environmental threats. Uh, this is literally designing an office building uh, that is secure against natural disasters, hurricanes, power outages, etc. You're going to have to take a risk-based approach on all of these controls because if you don't have anything important on site, you have less risk. So if you have a, a workforce that basically they come on site and it's an access point to the internet, that is less risky than if you have a, a, a location where critical infrastructure or data is stored where you might need to have off-site backups. Especially if you're like a data center and you're housing critical infrastructure, of course there's going to be a lot of physical uh, security controls there in terms of zones, backup, power, um, even uh, walls and offices designed to withstand tornadoes and hurricanes. So this is, again, going to be very, very much variable based on the organization shape and size. If you're high risk, you probably know that, and your facility manager is going to be um, selecting office space based on that. For most organizations, you, know, you just need a standard uh, office space to do work in. 11.1.5 is around working in secure areas. This plays off that same control. And uh, what they're thinking through there is that based on your role and responsibility, you need to be working in an area that is conducive to the type of data that you might be in contact with. Common examples here are if you are a call center and you're taking calls uh, with healthcare clients and you're capturing sensitive data, you might want to be in a secluded zone versus if you're a standard office worker, you know, a regular office will be perfectly fine. ISO just wants to see that you've taken those things into consideration and you've designed your space accordingly. Uh, the last control here is 11.1.6 around delivery and loading areas. So for most offices, you might be receiving packages. You might It could be the uh, UPS or FedEx or Amazon packages, or it could be something as risky as uh, infrastructure, secure data, 
for uh, backup copies or secure documents. And again, you're going to have to take a risk-based approach and based on whether you're receiving just mail or receiving highly sensitive data, you're going to secure your loading areas uh, in a different way. But taking into consideration your risk and then how you want to design your space to make sure that it's covering you know, your unique risk profile, the type of data, and how much physical security matters to you. So that is Control Objective 11.1 .1 around secure areas. Um, if you have questions around this, we'd be happy to help. One thing I do want to mention is um, something that comes up during ISO scoping is, is uh, physical security in scope for my organization? And will an auditor be coming on site? If you do any kind of key work on site, including engineering, it is uh, an auditor will plan on coming on site there, and those physical locations will be in scope. So again, I think the litmus test is, does something important happen on site? Be it engineering, be it your housing critical data, you have a corporate headquarters. If yes, then that location, if you're multi-location, will likely be in scope, and the auditor will do a sample of on-site locations each year. If you're completely remote, you do not have to have a physical location to get ISO certified. So just take that in consideration as you're uh, kind of planning your external audit and scoping uh, your ISO certification or implementing the framework, and that can be helpful. Uh, again, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you have questions, uh, please keep watching the series. You can also check us out at risk360.com, and we're here to help. Thanks.